This is Twit. WPA2 has sort of become the standard. It's what everybody uses. It's what everyone has on their devices. It's compatible with everything now. But it's a little old in the teeth. It's coming up on 15 years. Is it time for WPA2 to, to get a, a remake? Um, yeah, I think definitely. When you consider the fact that the, um, uh, the iPhone, the first version of the iPhone was still uh, not even in the stores yet, and that stand, the uh, cutting-edge technology was a BlackBerry um, when WPA2 uh, came into being. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd say that it's, it's well, well past its time. Right, right. And in our chat room, we've got JJ to the 484 saying, is, is there anything new since, I, since WPA2 got broken? And uh, I, I think he's probably, uh, he's probably referring to the October of last year announcement at Black Hat, uh, where it's, yeah. Uh, tell us yeah, about that. Yeah, I don't want I don't, I don't to slap anyone down, but I really bristle at the word broken. Um, I would say that uh, some egos got bruised that uh, WPA2 and, and Wi-Fi in general were certainly not broken. I would agree that the world lost its ever-loving mind last right. October. Um, but, uh, yeah, so with, with the advent of crack, and, and, and certainly a lot of people when WPA3 uh, was announced earlier this year and the enhancements to WPA2 were announced at the same time, um, a lot of fingers were pointed at, um, at the crack vulnerabilities. And, and as I pointed out, it's really um, well past time for, for moving along. If you consider the fact that in that same time period, um, take security out and just look at what we've done with Wi-Fi. We have gone from G to a couple of flavors of N, AC, um, 11 AC, Wave 1 and 2, and now we're, we're, we're staring down the barrel of, of 11 AX. Um, it, Wi-Fi doesn't stand still. It, it's always evolving, and the security that supports it needs to also. Right. You know, it, it's interesting because there is a subset of our community who kind of lump together WPA2 with WEP. They're like, oh, they're, they're both deprecated. They're both cracked. They're both broken. That's... Not, not really the case. I, I, thank you for, for bringing up the fact that there's, there's a lot of FUD surrounding this, but can you break it down? What were the vulnerabilities, the main vulnerabilities that they were able to discover with WPA2, and what are these enhancements that you're talking about? Right. So the, and, and actually the enhancement is only a piece of the WPA2 enhancement talks to the, the mitigating the, right. the crack vulnerabilities. Right. Um, so, uh, again, the crack vulnerabilities, there were about 10 CVEs um, that were uh, identified. Um, and for the most part, they had to do with uh, client, uh, unexpected client behavior, and in some cases um, on, on the AP side, too. And it had to do with the four-way handshake. Um, so there, and, and being able to uh, reset the, uh, reuse a key and reset the, the counter on that. And so that could possibly lead to um, some um, injections and, and maybe even not decryption, but being able to, to see some some of the data that was being transferred. It's uh, a, it, it, it's really more badge worthy, in my opinion. Um, and, and, and let me be clear: I'm I'm a, I'm a Wi-Fi engineer um, and an infosec junkie, so I certainly wouldn't pass myself off as as an infosec expert. But from it from the uh, the cracking and the hacking point of view, uh, it, it's not it's not that low hanging fruit where you're going to get massive rewards like you would from a, a, an effective spear, a fishing, or a whaling technique. Um, with crack, I would I would say that there's going to be someone out there that's going to maybe one day actually in the wild effectively uh, complete a crack attack and they're not going to get anything out of it except for bragging rights because the, you, you, there's just very little amount of material that you'll be able to get and you have no way of effectively targeting your target um, and so you know w with with uh, my luck if I were doing it I'd be getting some 15 year old bank account that has 15 cents <laughs> in it right right oh, if someone was going to be doing this so, so they're they're using the crack attack as you mentioned, they don't get full decryption, but what usable information could they pull from, let's say, a, a poorly configured WPA2 network? Well, it's not that the WPA2, and that's the other thing, it's not that WPA2 is broken. It's not, it has nothing to do with being a poorly configured uh, network. Um, and for the most part, you're going to see one-off. So you're, 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 
you're not going to be able to see a network-wide amount of material. You're going right. to be looking at a particular individual user. And the other thing is you've got to be right smack there. Um, and, and, and even uh, in the cases where you're uh, doing a man in the middle, it, you know, some people will say, well, I could be as many as two miles away with a high-gain antenna. Right. Um, <laughs> and, I know, and, and, and I know some really sharp shooters that uh, could, could seriously make that shot, too. But, no, I, I, I think that in, in this case it was, um, I think it was a nice um, slap in the face. A little, maybe there's been a little bit of complacency. Uh, my theory on why the world lost its mind over it is honestly is because um, I frequently use my mother as an example of, you know, this is so easy, someone's mother could do it. Now, not my mother, but, you know, someone's mother could do um, X, Y, or Z. Um, so my, even my mother called that day that, that crack was announced and said, do I need to turn my Wi-Fi off? You know, is this something I need to be concerned about? And I think it's just the ubiquitous nature of Wi-Fi. Um, you know, we hear about something like WannaCry or uh, Not Petya, and it makes the news. But for the most part, the average Joe or even the average, you know, IT professional isn't that terribly concerned because it doesn't really affect them. Everybody uses Wi-Fi. My smoker uses Wi-Fi. Um, so, you know, you're my coffee maker uses wi-fi so at that point i think we got everyone's attention and 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 the answer to my mother was if she could tell if she was using wi-fi i could tell her if she needed to turn it off right oh because no she doesn't mo actually this this does bring up an interesting corollary and that's about responsible disclosure because we both know that the way that you make a splash at a DEF CON or a Black Hat is you come up with some wonderful crack, some wonderful exploit, and you, you kind of you dramatize it a little bit. You try, to get, you try to get the eyeballs, you try to get the press, you try to get the people writing about it. But most of the time, it's an attack that regular people can't do anything about. Uh, it's the hacking of a rifle or the hacking of an advanced ATM machine. This was an announcement about a technology that pretty much everybody on the internet is, is using. Was this an irresponsible way to, to get those eyeballs? Because they did cause quite a bit of panic. No, actually, absolutely, the, quite the opposite. Because this, uh, I, and I was sitting in the audience at Black Hat um, in July when the initial paper uh, was discussed. And um, the discoverer um, stood up there and said, frankly, this is of academic interest. There is nothing, there's, there's no practical application to this. And he said that in July. And at the time, he had already disclosed to the two uh, Wi-Fi vendors the, uh, that he had used their access points um, in, the, in the initial attack uh, that he had done earlier in the spring or the initial um, vulnerability that he had uh, disclosed. Um, so those vendors were notified um, uh, before June, if I, if I remember correctly. He then um, made a further disclosure at the end of August, and so all Wi-Fi vendors, the WSA, everybody was aware of this at the end of August, and um, and and so then the public announcement didn't happen until October. Right. I don't think, to be quite honest, and I'm and I'm just speaking for as a as a layman looking, you know, in with my 2020 glasses on, I don't think that most engineers looking at the reality of what crack was and looking at the reality of what the mitigation steps were needed realize um, what um, my mother's, what the optics were to, you know, the average per, uh, person. I don't think anybody anticipated the world losing its mind. And I certainly didn't expect, and I think it was the Guardian or an, an, uh, an English newspaper that uh, declared that Wi-Fi had suffered the equivalent of an EMP. Ouch. And, <laughs> yeah, uh, which is why the blog that I wrote was Keep Calm and Wi-Fi On. I, and it was simply because my marketing department wouldn't let me call it something else, <laughs> which I won't tell Stop you. Stop losing your minds. Yeah, so, in other words, this was a responsible disclosure. It was irresponsible reporting. Uh, unfortunately, and I'm speaking to some, a journalist that I, I greatly respect, but I think that there was, uh, yes, I, I, I think that was a large part of it. I can tell you that I follow, I, I told you I'm an InfoSec junkie, so I follow a great many very smart people. Um, and on so Sunday morning before the uh, crack announcement, I, um, I started getting a niggling that in the Twitter feeds that this was going to happen. 
by Monday morning, the InfoSec world was intrigued, mildly interested. Um, by Monday afternoon, they were sort of banging their heads against the wall saying, okay, can we just move on? <laughs> and by Tuesday evening, they were literally screaming about, uh, yeah, yeah, but what about this serious CVE that I've been waiting for a patch for for the last six weeks? Um, and so they, while everybody was still losing their mind about Wi-Fi, the InfoSec world was uh, frankly pretty annoyed yeah. at the attention that it was drawing.